Hey, hey, we're continuing our series this week uh, called Identity, where we're looking at kind of how we are defined. Uh, if you remember sh- last week, we talked about hats, right? And we talked about how we all wear different hats based on just different settings we're in, different roles we play, different relationships. We wear these different hats where if we know Jesus, we should only wear the Jesus hat, right? That should be our primary identity and everything should flow out of that. And so today we're going to keep talking about that idea because what we, we looked at a little bit last week is that what happens in middle school, the tendency is to start switching hats around different people, right? To look different and to like just kind of be a chameleon around different groups of people, right? And so before we jump into that, I want to tell you guys two really quick stories. The first is when I was in first grade. So can you guys think back to first grade, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hardly think of it either. But when I was in first grade, um, my friend Ross convinced me to be in a talent show, all right? And um, somehow he convinced me, my brother, and then another friend, his name was Ryan, he gave us all of us to be in a talent show, and we did, uh, it was such a talent, we did a rendition of God Bless America, um, but it was God Bless My Underwear. No. This truly happened in my life. And we, all four of us, came out onto this stage at the high school that I would later go to, and we were wearing just a pair of boxer shorts. And we sang, we sang this song in front of a crowd of people, right? And I remember, I remember, listen real quick, I remember as a first grader thinking it was awesome, right? I had no reservations about it. I was like, oh, this is so funny. Everyone will love it, right? And I'm assuming most of you in this room have like some secondhand embarrassment for me, But in the moment, I I vividly remember as a first grader, I was like, man, this is awesome, right? And then fast forward, I was in fifth grade, right? And I wanted to be a part of our student council at school, right? Is anybody on student council at their school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the way it happened at my elementary school, we basically had a draft, right? Where everybody who was interested sat in the same room and we went around, I don't know if it's alphabetically, I'm not really sure how the order worked, but like... We went around and people got to go, okay, you, what team do you want to be on? And you got to choose. And so we were put on teams that then determined like who we would run with. So it wasn't like you got to choose like an actual like position, like president or whatever. You just kind of were on a team and you all ran together. I don't know why that's how they like structured it. Right. And so I remember sitting in this room and it going around and watching like multiple friends of mine get on the same team. And I was like, oh, that's the team I want to be on. Like, that's, that's me, right? And it came my turn to pick. And the teacher said, that team's full. And I remember sitting there. I was in this room of my peers, right? There were probably like, I don't know, 50 people in there. And I was like, well, I'll go to that team, right? And so I got put on this team I didn't want to be on. And I remember just vividly going, hold it together. Don't cry. You can't cry in this room, right? And so this like draft ended, we walked out. My mom was a teacher at the school. And so I walked, I said, hey, I need to go talk to my mom really quick because everybody else was going to the gym. And so I walked into her room and like the door closed behind me and I fell on the ground and I started crying. And I was like, I'm on the wrong team. It's the worst. My life is over, right? And what's interesting about those two stories, right, isn't that second one, I didn't want people to like see me be an emotional. I thought I had to be tough and really awesome and like strong and I couldn't cry because I was a dude, right? Because guys don't cry, right? And I couldn't cry in front of my peers because I would look so weird. And I remember sometime in between this talent show where I made a fool of myself and this time in fifth grade, I had learned that other people's opinions of me mattered, And that actually other people's opinions of me would change how I was going to act, would change what I would allow myself to reveal to other people, 
right? Because in fifth grade, I didn't want to be seen as the boy who cried. That wasn't cool. But ultimately, I just went and broke down to my mom, right? So that still was me. A lot of everybody cries, right? But I, I couldn't be seen that way. And so at some point in between there in my life, I developed the idea that other people's opinions of me mattered more than anything. And my guess is, for each of you, if you think back on your life, at some point, you developed this realization, right, that other people's opinions of you were going to maybe control how you acted, were going to control the things that you did, We're going to control your interest, control what you wore, control how you talked, right? Other people's opinions have this huge sway in our lives. And so as I got into middle school, that was how I started to operate. And I started to then, as we talked a little bit last week, I would change who I was around certain groups of people, right? So when I was with, you know, in athletics, when I was in football, man, we were all big and strong and we talked about sports and we were just macho, right? When I was in school, when I was in my classes, right, we were all, you know, bookworms and academic and talking about all this stuff. When I was with my friends, we'd be mean to each other and say, like, you know, curse words because that made us cooler, right? We thought it did. It did not. You're so right. We thought it did. Okay. So, what we learned, what I, what, man, Uh, for each of us, right? We all develop this idea at some point in life. And so for me, I started doing all of these things and changing who I was around certain people. I think if you can really think about your life, that might feel true for you. As you navigate middle school, you've kind of become a chameleon and you change who you are around different people. And I want to talk about three reasons why that really doesn't work and why we shouldn't act that way. The first is this. I found this really awesome quote. It says this, if people don't know what you're really like, they don't really like you, right? If you are constantly changing who you are around different groups of people because you want to try and fit in, you're never actually being yourself. Like, do you get that? If you're giving everybody a certain version of yourself that's not real, that you're just trying to put on this like, like, opinion? What's the word I'm looking for? It's stuck in my brain. You're putting on this like caricature of who you are. No one really knows you. And here's what's cool. Each of you in this room was created differently. You have a different personality. You have different gifts. You have different strengths. You're unique. God made you a certain way, and you should live in that. Uh, Does anybody in here collect anything? Yeah, a lot of you. Okay, does, does anybody collect Pokemon cards? All right. So I was actually just downstairs. I was downstairs with a, one of my buddies and his son, who's I think in second grade, pulled out his like thing of Pokemon cards, and I thought it was a Bible, but it was actually like his book of Pokemon cards, which is super funny. Um, <clears throat> but can anybody tell me what the rarest Pokemon card is? Yeah. No, there's actually one that's more rare than that. The most expensive Pokemon card. Shh. Mm-mm. The most expensive one is actually, it's called a Pikachu Illustrator card. I have a picture of it. Look at this. This card uh, once sold for $6 million, which is wild. All right. And so, look, this card, there's only, shh, there's only 20 of these that we know exist in the world, apparently. Uh, I just did research. I never knew that. But let me ask you a question. How many regular Pikachu cards do you think exist? Millions. Millions, right? So here's here's what I want you to see. What makes this card valuable? It's rare. It's unique. It's not like other cards, right? For you guys, for you guys, you guys got a lot of energy and I love it. For you guys, each of you is unique and you are rare and you're not like anybody else. God made you that way and that's what gives you value. 
when you change who you are and try and look like the other people around you and try and fit in and conform, that doesn't make you valuable. It just makes you try and look like other people. And so what I want to just ask you to do is to be who you are. Because if you're not really you, then people won't really like you. And I guarantee you this, there's something really interesting. If you lean into the stuff that you like, the music you like, the games you like to play, the sports you play, you can find other people who like that stuff too. I have seen people over the years who bond and have fellowship and community around stuff that I just don't understand. Uh, so years ago, I was at Whirly Ball. Have you guys ever been to Whirly Ball? Yeah. It's a great game. And I was there, uh, and we were there for like a middle school event, and I showed up, and it was like six o'clock in the, in the evening, and there were these four guys there who were playing Dance Dance Revolution. You guys know that game? And they were so good at it. Like they were running on these things. And I left that place at 8.30, so two and a half hours later, and they were still there, the four of them, as friends, having just a blast. And I sat there the whole time and I was like, what? Like their friendship and community is centered around something that they love, which is Dance Dance Revolution, which I don't understand, but that's a huge part of them. That's really cool. They're gifted in that. So for each of you, if you lean into the way God has gifted you, right, the things he has instilled in you and put into you, you can find community around those things and who you really are. All right, so the first problem, man, if you're changing who you are, people are never really going to know who you actually are. The second problem is this. If you walk around and you're constantly changing who you are to fit in, who are you thinking about? Who are you really thinking about? Yourself, right? If you're constantly walking into a room and going, okay, what hat do I need to put on so that I can fit in here? What you're thinking about is yourself, right? Have you guys ever been in a conversation with someone who's a one-upper? Like constantly as a one-upper. So you're having a conversation and you're like, oh man, I went to Disney this summer. It was awesome. Like, I've been to Disney like 60 times. It's whatever, right? Or you're like, oh man, I went to Six Flags and I rode on this really cool roller coaster. And like, I like have a roller coaster in my house. It's whatever. Have you guys ever had a, that's extreme, but if you had a conversation with someone like that, where you're going, dude, you're not listening to like have a conversation with me. You're just listening so that you can one up me. What I want you guys to notice really quickly, I want you to, as you leave here this week, shh, notice in conversations with your friends. Are you listening to what your friends are actually saying? Or are you listening to respond to them? All right? So as they're talking, are you going, oh man, I hear you and I feel, I have compassion for what you're saying? Or are you going, oh, I heard that. Mm, let me formulate my response while you're still talking right? Just, just kind of pay attention in your body as you're talking with people. What you're going to notice is so often when we have conversations with people, we are trying to respond to their conversation. We're trying to slightly one-up them. We're trying to relate to them, but we're never actually listening to what they're saying and actually sitting with people because our natural state is often selfish, right? And the same thing is true when you walk in a room and you're trying to shift who you are to fit into that crowd. And so what I want to just challenge you guys with is this. Instead of doing that, walk into rooms and just think about other people. Don't think about how you could fit in, but look for people because you'll start to notice people. You'll walk into a room and you'll say, man, that person is sitting alone. Let me go talk to them. Yeah. Or hey, that person, man, they need help. Let me go help them. Suddenly, when you stop thinking about yourself, it opens you up to see other people. And you can then start to have conversations with other people. You can say, hey, man, how are you today? What's going on? Hey, do you go to church? You can introduce Jesus to people. It allows you to have conversations. But if you constantly walk in a room and you're just thinking about yourself and trying to change hats, it isn't going to help you notice people. And the third problem is this, right? If you're constantly changing who you are, what you're really doing is seeking the approval of man over the approval of God. And so if you have that Bible verse, here's what it says. Galatians 1.10. It says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? 
Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I read this other quote. It says this. It says, we all want to be known by someone and known for something. We all want to be known by someone and known for something. And I think that God instilled that in us. All of us want to be known by people or for something. And what really we want to be known for is we want to be known by God. Who we really want to be known by is God. He put that in each of us so that we could know Him and be known deeply by Him. And we have taken that and we've said, let me change who I am so I can fit in with a bunch of people and gain a bunch of followers on social media and do all of this stuff so I can gain my own following. But what we're told in this verse is, man, if we know Jesus, we shouldn't be seeking people's approval. We should only be seeking God's. And the truth is, you already have it. Man, if you are in Christ, God looks at you and he sees the finished work of Christ on the cross. So you don't have to earn approval from him. You can live from that approval, which allows us, as we already talked about, to be open to other people, to be open for conversations, to not be selfish, to be confident in who God created us to be. And so my challenge for each of you is as you walk out of here, as you guys go to small groups and you talk, to be just kind of open and honest about this idea of do I in situations, in certain settings, do I shift who I am to fit in? And then as we talked about kind of the issues with that, that you guys would be honest and go, man, I do find myself thinking about that, and I have never thought about it being selfish, right? I've never thought about the fact that people wouldn't get to know me. And my prayer is, as you guys walk out of here today, you would understand that God wants you to just wear one hat, right? He wants you to wear the, the identity of Jesus and have everything in your life flow from that. So you guys are going to go to small groups. You're going to talk a little bit more about this idea and dig into it together. So let me pray. God, thank you for today. We thank you that you have put us here together as a group to dig into your word, to dig into what is true about us. And I pray that every student as they walk out of here would understand that they're deeply loved by you. God, and that you sent your son to die on the cross for them so that they could then live daily in the confidence of the way you have wired them, knowing that you define them above all else and that their life could flow from that. I pray that you would bless the conversations we have in small group, bless the time we have together, bless our leaders as they lead those discussions. In your name we pray, amen. Amen.